Snitch on the toast. A snitch on the toast. Snitch us on the garlic bread. Snitch us on the garlic bread. Welcome to the show, Counselor Snitch. Thank you for having me. Everyone is so excited that America's favorite counselor and Italy's favorite counselor, she's worldwide, has joined us on the show today. Good morning, millennials. Good morning, counselor. Thank you. I needed that. How are you doing? Good. I'm. I'm very tired. You know, waking up early, it's not really my thing. I know, but you do it for the love of the campers, I right? I do it for the love of the campers, and I've been waking up early, earlier than normal for the past month, so like, I think I should be used to it by now, but I'm just not. No, you ne by the way, you never get used to it. Really? Yeah. You know what I was thinking about? Like most people, I was actually thinking about this this morning. Most people like have to wake up early, right? And it's like, why wasn't it just in, an inherent thing that it's not hard? For some people, just like I guess taking it's not a sip hard. of water isn't hard. No, it's like they, people wake up. Yeah, waking up is hard, but then they get over it. Like I never get over no, it. No, me but, neither. Until I go to Why sleep. is tired a thing? It, that just shouldn't be. Do you know what I mean? I'm just saying, like biologically, being tired shouldn't be a thing. That's just what I think. But oh, I don't know. Maybe it should. You have to listen to your body, counselor Snitch. It's so important. Well, my body's always telling me that I'm tired, so it just like shouldn't move forever. I don't know, counselor. This is above my pay grade as a six-year-old camper who's just trying You're to be- You're not a doctor? I'll ask, I'll ask a CEO. Who's just trying to be your favorite camper. You are my favorite camper. Thank you. I mean, I really feel so bad for the American camper these days because- It's not my fault. She hasn't been showing up. She, no, it's like, she's really just been so overshadowed by the Italian camper. Like, everyone loves the Italian camper. And everyone thinks American camper is so annoying, but it's like, American camper has such a good heart. I don't think that she's annoying, but she just hasn't been showing up lately. She's been completely overshadowed by Italian camper. Okay, she needs to show up, but I think she's been a little discouraged. What do you want me to do? I don't know, you need to get in there and have a bunk meeting. Oh God. <laughs> just of my two campers. Well, I don't know. I think we're going to be introducing some some fellow some new campers this summer. Oh, I'm scared. Yeah, I've been seeing some applications. Oh no, from what countries? <laughs> France. Oh. It's exciting. It's an exciting time to be a camper in Counselor Snitch's bunk. And it's an exciting time to be on the morning toast. So if you're done complaining, welcome to the show. Yes, the morning complaints are over. So what else is new with you? You've been really busy. I've been really busy. Um, what's new with me? Nothing. Well, um, we just got off, well, I just got off of a crazy leg of the Dirty Jeans tour. Claudia's still on it, but I just could not bear to miss another week of school. Um, so we've just been, you know, hitting, I think we were in like six states, because like, you know, Connecticut counts. Yes. And um, it was just a lot, but I'm ha very happy to be home, even though it's for a week and a half, because then we are off to Florida. Um, but yeah, you know, just being a jet setter, rocking What's up my Florida? miles. Oh, the shows. Clearwater, Clearwater and Orlando. Very fun. Very fun. How was spring break? Oh, so nice. I, we very um, pick and chose when we wanted to, you know, join the spring breakers. I like breakers. pick and choosing. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is the correct word? Pick and choose. Pick and choose, but like it, it, in was the in, past it was tense. in the past. We very much picked and chose. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. When we wanted to be part of the spring breakers, so we got to like chill a lot and then, you know, like also drink a bit. But it was so nice to relax and just, you know, really listen to my body. Were you tired there, Counts? Um... Always, but like not as much because I slept in and then like just chilled. So that was nice. Understood. We have a lot of questions for you about your jobs, your uh, status as a student, um, your counseling Whether or not I am still enrolled. Your counseling ab abilities, but we'll get to that at the end of the show. Okay. Because now it is time to deliver the fast five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. Okay, first up, in the developing story of Jesse Smollett. So yesterday, right before we went live, it came out that all charges against Jesse Smollett had been dropped, which to me is just the presumption of innocence, you know? Like, right. they were dropped because he's innocent. Right. Turns out that that's not necessarily the case. Though everyone is innocent until proven guilty, that that would also hold true for his alleged assailants. Right. So this is a very mussy story still. still. I didn't Are the alleged assailants still in prison? I don't think so. I think everyone, everyone, got everyone went home. Hmm. Okay, continue. Which is quite interesting. So yesterday, all we knew that the charges were dropped, so to me that means an innocent man. There was no evidence. That's, that's what that means to me. Yes, There me was no too. evidence. The state's attorney says, quote, I do not believe he is innocent, Jesse Smollett. 
The prosecutor who dropped charges against Jesse Smollett said Tuesday that doesn't mean he is not guilty of staging a hate crime against himself. And he attributed the move in part to the actor's lack of criminal history. Quote, I do not believe he is innocent, First Assistant Cook County State's Attorney Joseph Maggots, who took over the case after Kim Cox recused herself, told a Chicago CBS affiliate. Okay, why'd she recuse herself? I don't know. She must have had like a conflict of, of interest. Interests. Maybe she liked Empire. Maybe. Quote, based on all facts and circumstances of the case, and also keeping in mind resources and keeping in mind that the office's number one priority is to combat violent crime and the drivers of violence, I decided to offer this disposition in the case, Maggots told the outlet. He said Smollett's clean criminal record was a factor, according to multiple, multiple reports. Maggots also insisted that he made the call to drop the charges and said Fox didn't have anything to do with the decision. Maggots also denied Mayor Rahm Emanuel's claim that the decision was, quote, a whitewash of justice, essentially accusing Smollett of preferential treatment due to his celebrity. Quote, not true. It's just not, he said. It's not a whitewash. He did, he did community service. He has forfeited his bond. It's just not a whitewash. Okay, his bond was $10,000. So he, did, he paid $10,000, and he did 16 hours of community service at Reverend Jesse Jackson's Human Rights Coalition. And 16 hours, that's and it. And voila. Yeah, 16 hours. I don't know. Something doesn't seem right. Something's not right, and it's so crazy that everyone in the political field in Chicago is not agreeing on it. Like, the right. mayor is not agreeing with, with the, the state's attorney. Oh. And I just think that if this decision were to be made, like, everyone was supposed to be on board. Right. So who made this decision? Like, who? The, the guy. The DA made No, but, like, someone definitely made him make this decision. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. But there like, was definitely some, not pay for play, because I don't know if it was pay, but, you know, there's definitely some um, strong words for play. Strong words for play. But you would think, like, those strong words, they could be coming from the mayor, but it's not the mayor. So, so it's higher up? I don't who know. Who is it? I don't know. And I'm just, I'm so confused. And so the, the rationale is that he's not a threat to society, so let's let him back on the streets, which He's makes, not which a, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, He's a threat to himself. But plenty of people who commit crimes aren't a threat to society. Right. Lori Lachlan is not a threat to society. Lachlan? Lachlan. It's Lachlan. What? Yeah. Oh. Just take a minute to, to, re I, to realize that. Wait, but it's, am I losing my mind? Why? Lori Lachlan. It's spelled Lachlan, but it's pronounced Lachlan. But it's a G but an it, H. But it's pronounced Lachlan. Wow. Wow, you really learn something new every day. You, that's what we do here on the Morning Toast. We educate. How'd you even figure that out? Um, I was watching a report about her or reading Maybe something. Maybe the reporter was and, wrong. No, and they said Laughlin, pronounced Laughlin. Like they were answering everyone's questions. <gasps> oh then my I God. also read that the FBI is still investigating him, and so is the U.S. Postal Service because of like the uh, hate mail that he received. Mail fraud. Same thing with Lori Laughlin. That's every, how they. That's, everything they is get mail everyone fraud. on mail fraud. If you mail something that's not legitimate, it's mail fraud. That's is that right? So, yeah. Which is so crazy. And it like, applies to email too. We were just talking about this yesterday on the oh, show. Oh, okay, like, so I won't I That won't everything is mail fraud. And that's how they get you. They yeah. get you on mail fraud. They get so you on they mail fraud. So they could get Jesse on mail fraud because of that hate letter. Yeah. Interesting. But I don't know. I, I don't see it happening. Like, Me this either. was like, the big, this this was was their the big time. one. You know what the thing is? Is like in all of these things, these documentaries we watch, there's always those trials, but they always go the wrong way. And it's like, is that happening now? Or are we going to be watching a documentary about this in 20 years? I don't know. And then if you hear from Jesse, and we read his uh, lawyer's statement yesterday, like he's maintaining his innocence in all of this. Right. Well, he kind of has to. Right. Now. No, but so it's like, it's really, now, now that there's not going to be but any case, there's not going to be any evidence shown. It's just, who do you believe? When you say he's maintaining his innocence, he's saying that two, like, that two people assaulted him uh -huh. and all that. Uh-huh. Hmm. And that he was the victim. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Makes I don't know either. Think. So I'm just keeping up reading on it. I feel like we keep finding out new, new stuff. Details. And it's just, it's so mussy at the Cooks County State's Attorney's Office. <laughs> um, and I think they need to clean it up. Yeah, they need take to, a broom. They and need just to clean up, up the muss. The muss and the fuss. You know? Because yeah. I, I can't keep up. But I can't I mean, keep up. And it's just like, and honestly, it's so funny that like this is all going down about Jesse Smollett. Because when I was watching Empire a million years ago. Did you like his character? Yeah, I loved his character. He always had the best songs. Remember that song? You're so beautiful. Ugh, I remember you and Olivia listening to it. And it was a terrible song. <laughs> Um, and now, like five years later, this is happening. It's the craziest thing. It's the craziest thing. And you see, like, M the Do Empire. Do you still writers? watch Empire? No, um, I like fell off. Would this whole situation make you want to watch it more or less? Um, 
I'm indifferent. Like, I just like I don't really care anymore about the show. I was watching it, and I just got started to get too complicated, and I was just over it. And like, I wanted to invest my time in other shows, like you know, Dynasty. Like Dynasty. It kind of is like Dynasty. It's about you know, Empire, Dynasty, synonyms. Dynasty is so good, you guys. I don't know if all of you watch Dynasty. We've really shilled for it as much as we possibly There's can. There's nothing more I can but do. But if here. you're not watching right now, like you're not living your life to the fullest. It is the greatest show on TV. And when Justin Sylvester was here yesterday, he asked me like offhand, he was like, "What scripted? What's your favorite scripted show?" And I was like, "Dynasty." And he was shook to the core because Does he watch it? yes. Oh, thank and it's you. like no one like it's so underrated. It's so underrated. My biggest fear is it being too underrated that it gets canceled, and then I will just be upset. I know. Like, but it does have a season three, so we have a whole other season to push it on you guys. And like, we shouldn't even have to. Also, we could talk about like what's going on in Riverdale. Um, I, we can't because I'm so behind. Oh, you are? Yeah, I'm, like because I've been away for the past month, um, I haven't been able to keep up on my shows. But I, I just to have to say weekend. that the Heather's episode. Please don't say it was bad. Was cringe nation. No. Oh, because um, Cole Sprouse saying. No, oh. he wasn't even that bad. The whole thing, like, it was just, uh, it was not for me. Okay. They always choose, like, random musicals. And then it, it was, was... Heather's even a musical? Yeah. Oh. I just remember the movie. Yeah, it was a musical. I think Liz Gillies might have been in it. Oh, my God. Can we just do, like, Mean Girls or something? It all comes back to Dynasty. Or Legally Blonde? Everyone wants a shot of my boots, and you know what? Because I love them so much, this is my first time wearing them. I'm going to pick my leg up for you. Do it. They are by Malone Souliers. I think the French camper bought them as a gift to Curry Favor with the counselor sister. Oh, yes. And um, I fucking love them. They're like have a little cowboy flair. They're elegant. They're very What bold, are people so saying about me? I don't have the comments. They're up. saying that you're the best counselor in the whole world. That's a lie. No, it's not. You've gotten me through some really tough times, counselor. That's true, I have. <laughs> through your counseling. Yes. Um, so the boots are like really crazy and fun, so I tried to like keep it low-key with the outfit today, but I really think they're gonna be like a fun summer boot with a jean short. Oh, so cute. So cute. So cute. You're looking so cute today, Snitch. Thank you. Who's your outfit by? Okay, well, um, this is off-white, ever heard of it? And then Ooh, um, Virgil. Yeah, Virgil Abl. Virgil season. These new boots that I'm currently obsessed with are Mason, Mason Margiela. Margiela. And these jeans are top shop. Are they dirty? These jeans? Oh yeah, I never wash these jeans because they get so tight. So they're dirty jeans. Five days in a row, get over it. The amount of times that I've heard that line. So, yeah, it never gets old for me, but I haven't heard it as much as you. Okay, are you ready for our next story? Yeah, hit me. In another developing story from yesterday that is just taking a turn for the worst, quote, drunk Wendy Williams rushed yeah. to hospital after husband's alleged mistress has baby. Devastated Wendy Williams is not in a good way after being rushed to the hospital hours after her husband's alleged mistress gave birth. The talk show host was found drunk on Monday, soon after Page Six reported that Sharina Hudson, the alleged longtime love of her husband, Kevin Hunter, had given birth. She was taken to the hospital where she was given IV fluids. However, she still showed to the set of her show and filmed on Tuesday. The star had left the sober home in Queens where she has been staying, sparking a hunt for her before she was found. But she's now back at the facility, we're told. It's widely believed that Hunter is the father of Hudson's baby. And a source said Wendy is not in a good way. Everyone is so concerned for her. The sad thing is that she's been working so hard to stay sober and she's been so honest in her struggles with all her fans. And this just tipped her over the edge. Okay, so I think it's very um, obvious that you know one thing has to do with the other. Oh, for sure. And Justin and I were saying yesterday, perhaps she went back to being um, drinking and, and being in a bad place because she found out that her husband was having a baby with someone else. Oh, you but mean then, like in general? Yeah, like back yeah. A, a few months ago right. when she went away and didn't do her show. Oh. But now it's like this shouldn't be new. If that's true, then this shouldn't be news to her. Right. Um, but, but I just, it I might just not feel be so sad for her. just like hitting her harder. I don't know. That is so sad. Are they still together, her and the husband, technically? Yeah. Mm. And he like works with her. I think he's like her manager. And oh, he's messy. Like on messy. Messy. And she's just such a great woman. And, and obviously we all know that she deserves so much better. And I just... I just want her, I want to, her to know like that for herself. Find, yeah. You know? Ugh, that's really sad. I feel really bad for her. But you've got to go through the storm to get to the rainbow. Because the sky's finally open. The rain and wind stop blowing. But you're stuck out in the same old storm again. We just harmonized. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> so hold tight to your umbrella. Cause darling, darling, I'm just trying to tell ya that there's always been a rainbow hanging over your head. Ooh, it'll all be alright. That's this my is, favorite part of the song. This is easily like. 
so beautiful, like a little nursery for everyone to listen to, or like <laughs> no. nasal and nation. And also we're the two of the sisters who cannot sing. So. Right, but I think together we make each other better. I don't know. Um, That's such a nice sentiment. I love that song, obviously, and the message, and it's really true. And I hope that Wendy really like finds some joy and happiness and stability after this man. I can't even deal with him, but it, he is her husband, so you like don't want to talk too much shit, you know? Because if you respect Wendy, you've got to respect right, her choices. Right, right, right. But it's not a very good choice because he's clearly a bad man, honestly. He is. Or, oh. as Justin and I were saying yesterday, you might have like an open, a Hollywood open relationship situation. Mm. But in which case, but if like, that were the case news like this wouldn't drive you right. to be drinking. So, I don't know. I just like feel for her, love her, whatever she needs. And I just can't believe she's still doing her show at, at this tough time. Like, is she going to be on? How often is she on? Every day? Every day, but I think they do some pre taped. Oh. So. Oh my God, that is that is crazy. People are liking the Casey duet. Ooh, Ooh. maybe we'll. Uh, are we the next Maddie and Tay? Perhaps. How was the concert last night? Oh my God, I can't believe it's taking me this long to bring up Lennon and Stella. Um, the concert was amazing. I love Lennon and Stella so much. If you don't know who she is, she was on Nashville. Her and Lennon and Maisie, the little twins, who got famous like from you know the Cubs. The Cubs. Um, so now she went solo, and her music is so good, and she's so good, and she's so pretty like mm. so pretty and I'm just like really obsessed with her and I just need her like I feel like she's gonna be like the next Casey Musgraves like she they very much have that vibe of like sad songs you know mm -hmm. um she was so good like I can't talk about her enough she has just such good music takes a bitch no bitch yeah it does it really does take a bitch no bitch you know yeah that seems to be a song that speaks to you particularly no it's very relatable takes a snitch to know a snitch I don't know how did I come up with that Takes a snitch nose. Like I feel like you don't appreciate her as much as I do. No. So I had to beg her to come with us last night. But no. I to no avail. Well, I just ha didn't have any energy yesterday, and I don't have a lot today. But I'm working on it. Okay. It's just hard, you know. Counts. I know. Um, what was I going to say about Len and Stella? Len and Stella, her dog. Oh. Named Ocean, she by the way. She has a King Charles Cavalier Spangle. She has a Theo named Ocean. And, and a like, really cute one, too. It's really cute. Named Ocean. And she brings him, Ocean, I don't know, everywhere. And like on tour bus, just like, and he's so cute. And they got him a little like tour, like pass. <laughs> you need to become friends with her. I know. And it's like, now's the time because she's not huge yet. Yeah. I know. I've but been then she'll about watch this. this episode where you like plotted to be her friend. Right. But your intentions are pure. My intentions are pure. I really think we'd have like a great time together. Okay. And like we're the same age. Yeah. I think she might be a year younger, but still. Cool. Cool. She's so cool. Very cool. I'm excited for you. For my new budding friendship that she doesn't know about yet. Yeah. Okay, this next story is really crazy and I'm all over the map about how I feel about it. Cardi B says she drugged and robbed men because she had quote, limited options. After a video surfaced of Cardi B admitting to robbing and drugging men, the singer is explaining herself. In the clip from an Instagram Live recorded three years ago, the rapper said, quote, I had to go strip, I had to go. Oh yeah, you wanna fuck me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go back to this hotel. And I drug them up and I robbed them. That's what I used to do, via hip hop ratchet, she explained. After horrified social media users responded to the 26-year-old star's confession with the hashtag surviving Cardi B oh in reference God. to surviving R. Kelly, Cardi took to Instagram to explain her actions. Quote, so I'm seeing on social media that an Instagram live I did three years ago has popped back up. A live where I talked about things I had to do in my past, right or wrong, that I felt I needed to do to make a living, she wrote in a post on Tuesday. I never claimed to be perfect or come from a perfect world with a perfect past. I always speak my truth. I always own my shit. The star said that while many artists glorify violence and crime, that was never her style. There are rappers that glorify murder, violence, drugs, and robbing, crimes they feel they had to do to survive. I never glorified the things I brought up in that live i never even put those things in my music because i'm not proud of it and feel responsibility not to glorify it while the former stripper said she was not proud of her actions she felt they were necessary at the time quote i made the choices that i did at the time because i had very limited options i was blessed to have been able to rise from that but so many women have not she said whether or not they were poor choices at the time i did what i had to do to survive okay uh, yeah so when first I read this, and I guess every time I like read a news article on the internet, I just never think it's a, a big 
like I never registered the gravitas of it, big or small. Totally, okay, yeah. So when I first read an old live surfaced, it was also coupled with her statement. So I was like, okay, she said this in the live, and then here's her statement where she said I did what I had to do, and I just didn't even process what it was that she had to do. Yes. Then I saw all these comments in the toasters where it was like, could you imagine if a man did this, if this was a man? Oh. Canceled nation, like it is a, a real crime and like a horrible thing that like, it, it's Bill Cosby, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I also happened to be watching an episode of American Greed last night where it's about these girls who work in a bar who like bring back rich men and drug them and then swipe their credit card like over and over again. Um, and they wound up working for like a bigger Russian like, mob in yeah. Miami, but like that's what like that's, that's how they made money, and so it's it's a serious crime enough to be on American Greed, and Cardi B is out here doing it and admitting it, and then it's like in her statement she did never she she says I did what I had to do to survive, which sort of like minimizes what it was that she was doing. Right. Like I don't, she, I like, don't know what no, to, I really don't know what to think here. Like it was like it's very very fucked up. It's very fucked up, but it's also Cardi B and like we love her and everyone loves her and like she's so funny. And everyone knows that she like has these like weird things about her, but then it's like when it comes down to it, like this, this ain't is cool. a criminal act. This ain't cool. This is so not it's like, cool. But it's like to so many people, she can do no wrong. And like I feel like I am one of those people, <laughs> but when I stop and think about it, I'm like, no, this is very wrong. Yeah, exactly. It's like I want to defend her here, but like I can't. Right. Like. It's, it ain't right, you no. know? And you just have to think, like, if it were a man... Oh, my God. ...in this situation, like, it would be over for them. There, so the FBI would be looking into it. The same, right. <laughs> the same rules, like, have to apply for everyone, and as much as we love her, they have to apply for Cardi B. And, like, I just... I think, like, she'll be fine, and I think people love her so much that, like, this is also a part of her story. It's not, like... Coming out of left field. Right. She's never pretended to be someone that she's not, right. like... She's always been honest with her fans, so I think she'll be fine. It's just, like, really shocking. Really shocking. And that's all I have to say about Me it. Too. Also, like, I haven't... All I've, see, like, known is, like, what I've read. I don't really know other than the hashtag, like, surviving Cardi B, which is also still making a joke of it. Like, it's still a joke. Like, no one's really... No, I haven't seen any media or watch any shows where people are really talking about it, how seriously we're, we're going to decide to take this. Right, right. You know? It's, um, just like, it's just like a story. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like, I don't know. It's just, it, the way it's being handled. I don't know what to say because it's just like. It's does, so shocking. Like, and, and it just doesn't really seem like real or that people are taking it as a real thing that she like robbed and drugged men. Like that's nuts. That's nuts. And especially because I was literally just watching that episode. I'm like, wow, this is a horrible, horrible thing for women to do to men who just like we're are just looking like, for a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, in the in the American Greek, they were just looking for a good time. It was like this weatherman who went down to Miami, like because he it was right after like the February sweeps of weather, and like he had the week off, and he loves to go to Miami, and he's single, and he's cute, and um, he goes to a bar, and these two women approach him, and they're like, "Let's go to the like they're drinking Pinot Grigio with him," and they like persuade him to take a shot. He was like, "No, I don't want to," and finally they literally like throw it down the hatch, and it's drugged, and the no, whole rest of the no. night is a blur. That's and so sad. And he buys a piece of art in an auction that turned out to be just like a piece of art on the wall at the bar that they worked, and in total in two nights, and then they left his wallet in the room. They, he didn't know that he had robbed, and didn't there was really no receipts. probably also money. A weatherman doesn't make that much money. I think, he did, I think he was doing okay, because they, in total in two nights, he, they got $40,000 out of him. And That's then, like his salary. Yeah, and then American Express, like, wouldn't, Give him money back or Wouldn't give him the money back, but then Miami Vice, like, did an undercover investigation. Like, they were doing this to, like, a bunch of men So did he get his money back in the end? I don't know, but he's on American Green now, so I think that's, um... He's doing fine. Yeah, I think that's also justice, you know? to oh. see And to see the gang taken down. No, for sure. That's totally justice. Yeah. So anyways, I was just watching this, and now it's life imitates art. You know what else I was watching American Green last night? And I love American Green, but it also always puts me to sleep. That's why I like <laughs> it, but I still like it. Um, do you know Martin Shkreli, mm -mm. the pharmaceutical guy who's like the most hated man in America? No, the only pharmaceutical guy I know is George from Desperate Housewives. Me too, <laughs> up until last night. Anyways, I started watching his because I never really understood what he did because okay. I never paid attention what to did the he story. Do? He is like an evil troll. Oh. And he was making money in the stock market but then losing it and he wound up buying a a drug, like a medicine, that is used um, for predominantly uh, AIDS patients, pregnant women, and babies. Like, okay. when they have, like, they'll have a, um, something where they need this drug. And he raised the price from $13 for a pill 
to $750 for one pill. How can he do that? Because he owned, like, it was just crazy. Wow, but he's sad. now he's on trial for securities fraud. So you know it all not comes mail back fraud? to Bruce. It's like you know OJ. Not mail fraud. Not mail. Uh, not maybe. mail fraud. Maybe it's always mail fraud. It's oh. but it's like OJ going to jail for uh, memorabilia stealing. Oh yeah, yeah. You know? they always get you on that. Those they always things. get you, even when you run away. <laughs> um. Anyways, we'll update you on this Cardi B story and if there's any fallout from it. I just. I wouldn't be surprised if there is, and I also well, wouldn't be surprised if there, if there isn't. isn't. Me too. Because it's like, it's, this isn't such a departure from who she's always said that she is, which is like someone who does what she needs to do in order to survive. That's true. And that's all. That's all she wrote. That's all literally. she wrote. Okay, next story. A little salacious celeb hookup. Stephanie Pratt and Derek Peth's date night may have just sparked a new relationship. Someone needs to check on Claudia. Oh my God, I didn't even think about her. Wow, you're a good sister. I guess I just, I thought she was so past it. You know, it just shows how much she's grown since their DMs back in the day. Right, right. She's going to kill us. Yeah. Everything is coming up roses for Stephanie Pratt in the hills of Southern California. With excitement building for the hills' new beginnings. Okay, I want to get back to that false statement in a second. One of the show's returning cast members decided to go on a date with a fellow reality star. Anyone remember Derek Peth from The Bachelorette? Yeah. Of course. Well, it's, was it should be ago. anyone remember Stephanie Pratt? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. The pair met up earlier this month in L.A., and while things may have started off a little rocky, a second date may be on the agenda. Quote, it took an hour and 15 minutes before Steph finally showed up, and her reasoning is she was in Hawaii, and they don't have daylight savings time, and she never changed her clock, and she thought it was a different time, Derek shared on iHeartRadio's Prattcast podcast. Probably the third thing I said to her was you need to pick out food because the kitchen closes in 10 minutes. According to Derek, he's never watched The Hills and knew nothing about Stephanie other than her brother's name, Spencer Pratt. And while he predicted she would be a true Southern Cali girl with no interest in being on the date, Derek admitted that the evening was pretty darn sweet. I was pleasantly surprised. She's a lot smarter than I thought and very quick, he told Wells Adams. There was not an empty, dull moment. He continued, we went to two Irish bars, we met a couple, and bar hopped with them for two hours. I'm into it. I would definitely see her again. Sounds a fun. A steamy makeout was involved before the night was over, and as for the second date, the odds are in Derek's favor. She suggested I stay longer. I think it would be cool to do New York. Oh, I guess the... the the date was in New York? I don't know. Oh, I thought it was in Hawaii or something? Oh, she was in Hawaii? Whatever. Confusing. Anyways, this is so cute. I just love when people find each other, and it's really giving me um, Nikki Bella and Peter Krause vibes. Did oh, you watch that episode? No, but she's with her Dancing with the Stars partner now. I know. So why does it matter? Because they, they're meant for each other. Oh, and actually? The did she was, like him on the show? She did. And oh. the problem was the timing, because she wasn't over John Cena, and she couldn't even kiss him because, like, she hadn't kissed someone else in five years. Like, she was still so raw from it. And, you know, she definitely needs to get Artem out of her system. Or maybe, like, they're meant for each other. Right. Either way is great. But, like, I think Peter really likes her. Or they're just the best actors in the whole world. <laughs> maybe. Honestly, no. I, I feel like he would really like her. Like, she's into fitness and all that stuff. And like, when he came on the show, he said brunette. that he was interested in a brunette who wasn't on The Bachelor. And at the time, he thought it was Claudia. But I think it's Nikki Bella. <laughs> Shucks. Um... That's actually really cute. Um, well, I just want Derek Pat to be happy and like me too. Coming from where he was, Tay Mocha, like oh my god, yeah, wow, that is a lot. anyone would be better. Um, well, I want this is a curious story to me because the Hills' new beginnings is coming back. It's unclear when because they're. It's mussy as hell there, too. It's mussy as hell. So they first did an interview where it said it was coming back in April. That's next month. Then it said it was coming this summer. Then I read yesterday that they're doing reshoots because I guess they didn't get the content well, that they apparently need. because Spencer... And it's like, this isn't a Martin Scorsese film. Like, this is just supposed to be like a fun reality TV show that, yes, is a little scripted. We know that about The Hills. But, like, it's not, you know, the greatest artistry of our time. I don't understand why, it's, why it's, they're having such difficulty. Spencer Pratt, like, kind of alluded to on his podcast, not that I listened, but I read somewhere, that um, a lot of people are, like, not addressing issues on camera and doing stuff like that because they want, they want to protect their image. So people are afraid to, like, be involved in drama or have drama because they don't want, like, people to hate them. But it's like, then why are you going on a reality show? Right. This is the inherent problem with this show because either it needs to be a reality show, which it's not because we know that The Hills is scripted and they're proud to be, like, a scripted reality type show. Or you need people acting, in which case bring back the OC and Misha Barton can get back to work. Yeah. Well, actually, Misha Barton is the only one who's really equipped for the job on The Hills. The because ghost of Marissa's past. I love it. I, actually, I, like I just have to say, like, I think The Hills New Beginnings is a horrible idea. Me too. I wasn't into it then. I'm not into it now. Like, just give Spencer and Heidi a reality show and we'll be set. 
Agreed. You know? Agreed. They're not afraid to air their drama on TV. And, I, and like, all of these people are so image conscious. Like, Whitney Port, like, she has, like, squeaky clean image. What is she going to do on the show that's going to be remotely Im- interesting? Totally. Same with Audrina and her brand deals. Like, yeah. she fucking did a sponsored pregnancy announcement. Like, I don't think she's going to be doing anything that would make any of the brands that she works with look like a And you want to know what fit. I want to know? I want to know how, like, the people who are putting together the, this Hills New Beginning, like, didn't think of this. No, because they're just so caught up in the thirst and like everyone. But I mean, it's their job not to be. No, it's th- their jobs like are, I mean, this is just what's so backwards about Hollywood and like they just think any, because they can't find success with new shows, they think a reboot is the answer to everything. If it had success then, it's going to have success now and like you're barely seeing that with Jersey Shore. Like, can't we just move barely. on? Barely. Yeah, that's so true, Jackie. Can't we just move on? Apparently not, because maybe they can't even come up with good ideas for new shows. So they have to go back to the old. And it's just like, why, like, it's called growth, you know? Like, Kristen Cavallari has grown. Yes. And, like, she went from the hills, and now she's back on TV, and, like, I love her show. You do? And it's exactly what she should be doing, yes. And she doesn't show her kids on it, so it's like, there are things about it that aren't, like, so great, because it's really, it's kind of like a Vanderpump rule style with the, with right, the with workers. The workers. Um, but the people that work for her, for her are, like, so immature, and so, like, such babies, and it's annoying, and it's like... It's it's really annoying. Um, and then she like hangs out with her friend and like tells her friend what happened at work. And it's like we all just saw it, and it wasn't that interesting to begin with. So now we have to hear the recap. And then she's gonna okay. tell Jay. Um, but her and her husband are like so cute. And her husband is so cute. They're so real, and he's hilarious. Um, and he actually gives like some pretty good advice. And I like I like where it's headed. I think it could be more like Nashville getting into the lives of the people who work there, but they tried that last season. And people weren't into it. People weren't into it. The cast got too big of heads and they also still have to work for her. She like needs people to work for her. So like I think she was like, I don't I, I don't want you filming them anymore because they're like getting carried away. Like one girl like who was her social media manager then like Shannon? never yeah, never oh, showed she, her. she is on my explore page every day. She's like I no. don't even follow her. I don't even know watch a show, but I know her name, Shannon Ford. She got like a little taste of fame from the show and then like never showed up to work again. And yeah. she got fired. Okay, good. Um, so, yeah, I think there's a better way to do The Hills New Beginnings. Or, you know what, what about The Hills and just a completely new cast? Like, I could think of tons of groups in young Hollywood that I would love to, for you to follow. Totally. And that I don't know about that, uh, that I don't know about yet. Mm-hmm. I want to be introduced to new people, like how I was introduced to Juliet Porter. Right. Like, right. I want new people to follow. That's what they should have done, is The Hills... New Beginnings, and it's an all-new cast who's 21 years old. Yes. And they're on the one hand, they have a, a little bit of a name for themselves, but they do want more Instagram followers. Therefore, they will do what it takes to make the show a success. Toast News Network will have a reality uh, side, and we'll make that happen, because clearly nobody else can. Right. Or you get the cast members grown up, Spencer and Heidi, and their lives, and like that's interesting, too. Yeah, that is. But either way, honestly, I won't be watching. Or you put it, Audrina on Real Housewives of Orange County, which was a rumor that happened once, and I'm so here for it. Is she married now? I think she is. No, she's not. Remember then she started dating, dating oh, Ryan, Ryan Cabrera. Cabrera again. So no, she's not. It was okay, so it was a rumor that started when she was married. But also no one on Real House is is actually married anymore. Oh, that's true. I actually don't think one person on Orange County no uh Tamara's married. And the new girls are is married. Anybody uh, one new, new girl. Is anybody from New York married? Um, not one, right? Not one. That's nuts. Yeah, but I think that's the point now. You know, it's like, I don't think they would even do a woman. Like, these women are just such independent, like, forces that that's the show. Okay. You know? Whereas on Beverly Hills, they're all married. Interesting. But it's also this, it's still a great, it, like, New York and Beverly Hills are still so good and has nothing to do with them being married or not. No, no, no. I so know, interesting. But it's just also just called Real Housewives, you know? Full of interesting factoids. That are well. Interesting. interesting. Our fifth and final story, Justin Bieber is taking a break from music to focus on his mental health. Justin Bieber, this was not the story that I thought I chose. No, the story that... Admits, sorry, I must have clicked something else. <laughs> Justin Bieber admits that he still loves Selena Gomez. Are you in kidding? A That's fake, the headline? In a That's the headline? That's the headline. That's the headline. Oh, my God. Wow, I'm mad for him. Justin Bieber is being tested this week. Hours after announcing he was taking a break from music to focus on deeper issues, the singer exploded after an Instagram troll went after his wife, Haley Baldwin. The hater's comment read, You are not in love with Haley. You only married her to get back at Selena. Plus, Haley sleeps with men like Shawn Mendes for fame, and she's a racist. Instead of turning the other cheek, the enraged, sorry singer wrote back, defending his wife and addressing his relationship with his ex. 
quote, a logical person doesn't talk or think this way. You should be ashamed of yourself, really. I always, I absolutely loved and love Selena. She will always hold a place in my heart, but I am head over heels in love with my wife, and she is absolutely the best thing that has ever happened to me, period. He also addressed the constant barrage of hateful comments that he and Baldwin receive. Quote, this is a reply to all the immature sick people who send Haley hurtful messages. Like, he always goes back to Selena, or Selena is better for him, he ranted. You have no idea my life and what's good for me. Haley is my bride, period. If you don't like that or support that, that means you don't support me. You're not a fan or a good person. If you were raised right, your parents would have said, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything. Bieber then posted a screenshot of the comment to his Instagram saying, stop sending Haley and I these messages. If you love me, screenshot this and repost this everywhere. And if you love me, please talk about it on the Morning Toast because I know you maybe weren't going to, especially not yesterday and today I kind of glazed over it, but then Margot suggested we talk about it and this is her age demographic. And you know, I don't dislike Justin Bieber, so I'll help spread the message. Okay, and you like Haley He Baldwin. put all of that in his Instagram. Wow, I know, I read that also. Um, <laughs> and I like Haley Baldwin because she, she I, has good style. I love Haley Baldwin like so much. I, weird, I, like, I love him and her and Justin Bieber like so much. Like, really it makes so much sense to me I think that they are perfect together and maybe I'm naive and maybe I'm wrong so be it I don't care um the fact that the headline was that he, he admits he still has Selena Gomez makes me so mad and you know what like so I, there was a post about this in the toasters and someone commented like I just wish he hadn't said Selena's name because now the headline would be like he admits to loving Selena Gomez I was like no way like he said so many other things she was right I feel like I don't care about these people, I and I don't know why. And I think it's about like the Selena Gomez of it all. And I know that she hasn't been China from the show, but I just really I don't her to like. Be, I really, I don't, really like don't like talking about her because I feel like anytime she's in the news, it's like so manufactured and it's not what she's actually doing. So like, what's the point? I feel like. And then when it comes nothing. to Justin and Haley, I I feel like we know nothing about them too. Like. And I think that they are good for each other. They're, I don't know that they're perfect and that they're in such a great place. because I, I never said that. Because we've seen him like crying in the street. I never street. said they were in a great place. But you know, marriage is hard work. Right. But I think that... I know that. They're really... They're doing the thing. You know, like they're they're married. They're living together. They're, you, st- you know, they're, they're doing it all. They're working on it. Like that's what all you can ask of a couple. Like, and they're just trying. And everyone like is just shitting on them. And it's like, leave them alone. And like Selena Gomez... She just doesn't do it for me. I just don't like her. I just, like, I don't care about her. And I feel like I literally don't know anything about her. I see her coach ads, her Puma ads, and that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. I, so anytime it has to do with, so when the headline is, he still loves Selena, for that reason, I'm out. I've seen that headline a hundred times. But, yeah. like, that's not what this was about. And what's good for him is, like, I actually don't even really associate him with Selena Gomez anymore. Me neither. He's really, like, and who would have ever thought that that was possible considering they were attached for so long, what, even when they weren't together. But, like, now I really see him and, like, Haley Baldwin that, like, he's her, she's his girl, you know? He, she really is. But they, Haley and him had just as big of a history as Selena and Justin, but nobody really cared. That's the thing, because Selena yeah. was huge and Haley Baldwin really wasn't at the time. Yeah. It's just so she weird. She's just like a friend of Kendall Jenner. Right, which is, you know, a good place to be. Yeah, but whatever. So that's that. I like them. I only honestly wish good things for them, and I really would love to new Justin Bieber music. Yeah, do you think it's coming? Um, he alluded, that I think he, it's coming, like, not soon, but it's coming. Yeah. We haven't had an album from him in so long. Since Purpose, which was actually so good. So you good. You give me purpose. That'll be exciting for you. What new music are you enjoying, Counselor Smidge? What's cool? Ooh, um, Lennon Stella, if you've ever heard of her. Um, what else am I listening to? I've been listening to Maddie and Tay a lot lately. They've been having some good new music. I've weirdly been listening to George Strait a lot. Weirdly? He's been um, putting out new music. You know he's a king. That's what they call him, the king. Okay. Um, he's been putting out country, new music, and he has one called God in Country Music with his little five-year-old um, nephew, and it's so cute, and he sings on it, and it's just really cute. And then he has he just came out with one, which is my personal favorite right now, which is called The Weight of the Badge. It's just about like police officers and what they like sacrifice to do their job, and it's just such a nice message, and so I've just been liking it. And then um, that's really it. There really hasn't been some new music, and it's kind of, I need some good stuff. Me too, but, but Luke summer's... Holmes is making an announcement on Thursday, and, and I really think it's a new single. And summer's coming, so that's when all the good music comes. Now, we have a lot of viewer questions oh, for you. Oh, and Maren Mars album. Oh, yeah, that's the stuff. That's the stuff. We have a lot of viewer questions for you that I'm going to get to, but before that's I so do... so interesting to me. But before I do, 
Have you heard about 23andMe? If you haven't, like you're living under a rock and you, this is your first time watching the show, so welcome. Totally. With 23andMe's Health and Ancestry Service Kit, you can explore 125 plus personalized genetic reports that may reveal the link between your DNA and your health traits and more, including your chances of developing certain diseases. I was just watching um, a documentary about a woman who was trying to do this and instead she just extorted all of Silicon Valley. Was it American so, Green? No, it was um, The Inventor. So why don't we stick with 23andMe because they're giving real results, you know, without the fraud. Diabetes is a growing public health challenge. One in three adults in the United States has prediabetes, but 90% of those with prediabetes don't know that they have it. With 23andMe, you can find out these things about yourself and address them before they become bigger issues in your life. Order to your 23andMe Health and Ancestry Service Kit at 23andMe.com slash toast. That's the number 23andMe.com slash toast. Again, that's 23andMe.com slash toast. I used it, 23andMe.com slash toast. Did you? Yeah, to Good. order. I still haven't sent in my thing because I'm kind of scared. But um, I'm scared to find out that you're not my real sister and yeah, you're not my real Yeah, what if counselor. that happens? I don't know. I feel like, I mean, <laughs> so obviously they have all of these um, genet um, health and genetic kits that you can do and you learn so much about yourself, like why you're always tired. You should do it for that totally. reason. Totally. And they also tell you, like, um, whether what's, you like savory or sweet. I think that's they so They cool. also tell you what's the time that you should, like, they, they tell you what time you naturally wake up. So like oh, mine's gonna be like two p.m. <laughs> right, but maybe there's a time in there that's actually like maybe it's like nine thirty, and so maybe you just need like thirty more minutes of sleep, and wow. you'll feel good. So you should definitely try it out, and then also to confirm that you are my sister and my counselor. Okay. I wonder if they do counselor testing. Like, is this your real counselor? She is that's not next. your counselor. She is not the counselor. <laughs> okay, speaking of the counselor, it is time for questions for the snitch. It's so interesting that people have questions because I feel like everybody like just knows everything about my life, you know? Yeah, but I feel like we see so much of your life and then it's, the question is, how does she do it all? Because as much as you're a snitch and like you just rest on your laurels, you're actually working pretty hard these days and like you're traveling a lot and you're very busy. So, how do you manage all of it? What is your priority in terms of school, tour, snitchery? And all the other things that you do. What, um, how do you I prioritize? I would say, like, uh, I don't know. Like, obviously, school would come first because I would really, really like to graduate. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to fail and stay another semester. So I guess school and just getting things done. And then tour. Um, how do I do it? Well, here's the thing. Everyone's always like, how are you still in school? Blah, 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 blah. I don't know about you guys, but, like, college, like, classes are huge. Your teachers don't really know if you show up or not. All you, you have hair, I can't imagine. That's good for the show. Oh. All you have to do is like do your assignments, be there for your tests, and it's on you to make up like the work and like make up what you missed and stuff like that. So obviously it's not ideal, but like nobody really cares that I'm not there, as sad as that is. Um, but on top of that, when some of my classes are smaller, like all you like you just talk to your teachers. It's like, hey, like this is where I'm at. Specifically at NYU, like a lot of people really do have jobs and like that's like kind of how things like work there. That like they're like people who are like actresses and like whatever. So yeah. it's like they're very understanding and you just talk to them and they're like, okay, like cool. And like if you need to do extra credit, they'll give you extra credit and like that's it. It's really just like it, you just have to be on top of it, but like there's no like secret, you know what I mean? It's just like I don't show up to a lot of classes and like that sucks and it gives me like terrible anxiety, but I have friends in all of my classes, so like if I miss something important, they will tell me. And I'm home, like I'm home when I have like a test and a this and a that, but I do all my assignments, I do everything, and I'm just like, it's a lot, but I'm just like on top of it and I just like keep it together, I guess. So you're graduating this spring. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallel I sent her her Google Calendar invite for it on Monday. But then I forgot that her graduating means that there's a graduation ceremony that I'm supposed to attend. And I don't know what it is. Maybe I had a traumatic experience in my childhood at a graduation. Did but you? But I hate graduation ceremonies. I hate them so much. Well, be glad that I don't I'm not going to Yankee Stadium. I don't want to go to yours. I don't want to go to mine. I think they're so boring and such a waste of time and everyone has to get their name called like a big fucking baby. <laughs> and it's like, the gift is the graduation. I couldn't agree the more. The gift is the diploma. And you know what's so crazy? I could not agree more. I think they're so annoying, like so just like drawn out, whatever. From the school that I'm in at NYU, they're doing it twice that day. You choose. You want the 10 a.m. or the 3 p.m. I obviously chose the 3 p.m. for everybody's sake. But, like, they do it twice. Just, like, you know, like, the dean, like, makes his speech twice. They call out the names twice. It's like, really? You, once isn't enough? But then that's not even it. Then there's, like, the whole NYU one, which is at Yankee Stadium, which I will obviously not be attending. 
but um, be glad that I'm not making you go to that. I'm just making you go to like two hours and then, a good, and then a good dinner. Yeah, and I have to plan the rager. Oh yeah, you have to plan the rager. I have, I'm planning a lot of stuff right now, parties wise, so maybe I'll just like add it to my docket of party planning. Yeah, just do that. So you are graduating in the spring and like, Maybe that makes it easy. If you were a sophomore, you wouldn't be able to be so flexible right now with your schedule. Like, what By would the way, you oh, that's the thing. If I was, like, a freshman or a sophomore, I don't think I'd be able to do this. A lot of, like, those classes are just, like, like harder or whatever. But I really am a second semester senior. And so, like, things are just more lax. Like, like my assignments, I really honestly haven't really had that many assignments. They're mo mostly just, like, final papers that, like, will hit me in May. Right. So as long as you do those papers, you graduate. So what would you have to not do in order to, like, really have all of this hinder your graduation? Like, what would you have to miss? Or not. I guess submit. like miss, just like miss, like it would just, if I just didn't do anything, okay. didn't submit my assignments, didn't submit my papers, didn't show up for tests, which is like all three are things I would never do. Mm -hmm. So do you get stressed? Oh my God. Do you know me? Yeah. How do you handle it? Um, I, go, I talk about it a lot. Oh, I, I know. So that, <laughs> that's how I handle it. I just talk about it, like how I'm so stressed and I need people to like just like talk me, talk me down and be like, listen, it's really not that big of a deal. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that is always helpful. Okay, we'll get back to school. Let's not. I can't wait until like we don't have to ask you those questions. Um, tour. What yes. is something that Claudia does on tour that annoys you the most? I have such a good answer for this. After every single show, she literally thinks she did terribly and she does amazing, and it's so annoying. And it's like, she doesn't listen when I say, I'm like, honestly, it was so, so great. Like, where were we? We were just in Phoenix, and she had done a show that I was, that I've seen the show a hundred times. All of her shows are great. Honestly, they're amazing. But she had done one that was like, incredible. And I got off, and I was like, that was the best it ever went. And she was like, what? And I was like, you didn't think so? And she was like, no, not at all. Like, she, that's what bothers me. It's like, she doesn't know how good she is. That's which so is funny. such a like nice answer, but it's annoying. Yeah, because then you always have to like. I have to be like always pumping her up. Like, no, it was great, it was great. And it's like, I shouldn't have to tell you this. Right, and then you sound, if you're always saying it was great, it was great. Like She, she thinks I'm just like a, what's it called? A like, yes man. Yeah, that's not it. I would tell her when it's, when it's not good. Yeah. So with all of this traveling and work and school, has it been hard to stay body by snitch? Oh my God, it's been, um, very, very difficult, I'm not gonna lie. It's just so hard to be good when you're on the road, and especially like in airports and all that stuff, it's just like so hard to make like good decisions. Um, I don't, I don't like, there are times when I like think I've like, oh my God, I've definitely gained so much weight, and like nobody's telling me, like I get so paranoid and in my head, but then it's like I get home and it's like, I'm, I'm fine. Um, so it's just like, I, me and Claudia really try not to indulge so much, so like, We'll indulge like once in a while, but we really never finish our meals. So it's like we'll get like the brownie at the comedy show, but we'll each have a bite, and like that's really it because it's not that good. <laughs> but like, so when I'm, I the snacking is what kind of gets me. It's like you know the mini bar, I can have some pretzels and this and that. But like when we go to when we go to like have a meal, I always just like try and be conscious and like get a salad with like a protein and that. But it really is very very difficult. I can't even like. I can't even stress that enough. Like when I was in Florida, but that didn't count. That was vacation. I ate like an animal. And like whatever, you know? Like that's you have like, to. You just have to do that. And it's like for your and it's like dissanity. I can't get you can't get so hard on yourself because it's like eventually you will be back home. You will be back on track. You will be back on a routine. So just like let it happen. Well, might I make a suggestion to help you keep your weight loss I, on track? Yeah, I'd love some. Have you heard of Noom? No, I haven't. Okay, Noom is something that I love and like I love tracking my progression like in anything that I do. That's why I like I'm obsessed with having a planner. I just need to know where you've been. I need to be able to see my life visually, including my weight. And sticking to a weight loss plan can be hard, especially when you don't know how to handle the thoughts and obstacles that hold you back from making progress. And especially when you're the production assistant on the Dirty Jeans tour. Not even, I'm a producer. Most people who lose weight gain it all back. Why? Because most weight loss plans just tell you what to do, do while you're on the plan, True. not after, not how to live with it, not how to tour with it. With Noom, you'll lose the guilt and learn how to develop a new relationship with food. Try something different. Try Noom. Different results call for a different approach. Learn. Don't diet. So for me, I've wanted just, I always want to lose five pounds. I feel like packing Regina George, but also always. I've, I've been wanting to change my muscle makeup, my percentage of fat. So it's like the weight on the scale won't necessarily change, but I'll look different because what my muscle body is made up of will change. And so Noom has helped me do that by keeping track of like what I'm eating, when I'm working out, and helping me with tips about how to change what I'm eating to 
you know, really hone in. And I mean, I'm not perfect all the time. I'm not perfect most of the time. But it, it helps me know what I need to do in order to, to achieve my goals. Yeah. Noom is designed for results. It's out with the old habits, in with the new. Sign up for your trial today at Noom, N-O-O-M dot com slash toast. What do you have to lose, LOL? What Visit Noom.com slash toast to start your trial today. Again, that's Noom.com slash toast. Start losing weight for good. I feel like sometimes when I do these reads, I start to sound like American camper. Like yeah. just so excited about the thing that I'm talking about. <laughs> you do. Like, what do I what do you have to lose? What do you have to lose, Counselor Snitch? Try Noom today. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Uh, speaking of Counselor Snitch, camp is coming up I know. quickly. Are you freaking out? Are you? I am. I feel like it's so much pressure because I'm going to have to be like in character the whole time. No, Because I'm going to be freaking out. Like, remember during Camp Toast 1 when I just couldn't stop calling you Counselor Snitch? That's how it started. That's how it started. And now, now that I'm now two that it's taken out a life of its own, like how many campers are going to come out? It's like there's just going to be like clones of you. Totally. But it's like I'm only one me, so I, I just need a bunch of different hats. Literally. Literally. Speaking of, how's Mrs. Hat? She's good. You know. She's switching her hats all the time. She's switching her hats all the time. Okay, a lot of people did ask about your dating life, and I just I, I hate to do it to you, but I don't want to ignore them. Okay. So we set you up on Hinge on a Patreon episode last month. Have you used it at all? Um, like not really. I mean, when when we start, when like initially, I like thought it was like a fun thing to do, so I'd like go on it with my friends. And yeah, it's like, like a video game sort of. Yeah, literally. Like, um, and then I kind of have just stopped, especially like I'm never really here, so like what's really the point? I did go on one date. Nothing came of it, um, so just to quench everyone's thirst, because everyone's like, did she go on the one date? Yeah. I went, okay? Um, it was like fine, you know, it wasn't bad. Um, but yeah, dating life, just like... You're a busy woman. It's very hard to date someone who's always on the road. No, we'll see the summer once like I'm actually back here and like settle down and all that stuff, and like everyone graduates and you know, everyone comes back to the city. Yeah, and like so, you have a tan, yeah, and you're so feeling your look. I'm really not that worried. I'm not that worried either, but like it's just fun to live vicariously through a snitch. Okay, yeah, a lot of dating questions. And there was one question that we got more than um, anything, really. I'm nervous. Oh, oh. What do I pack oh. for this camp? Oh my God, I thought it was gonna be like, what are you doing after graduation? I was like. <laughs> oh God, no, I would never do that. What, seriously, what do I pack for this camp? Okay. Um, bum, 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 what do you pack for this camp? Honestly, lots of shorts, lots of sneakers, tank tops, sports bras, you know, active wear. And then some like cute stuff, jean shorts with like a cute top, you know, crop top, central, it'll be hot. Um, maybe some cute sandals. Don't really pack heels, that's not necessary. Um, hats, hats are helpful, you don't want to burn your head. And you want to be Mrs. Hat or Mr. Yep. Sunscreen, um, bathing suits, you know, get that tan on. I feel like that was a pretty good packing list. Cancer Snitch, where do you like to shop? Oh, interesting. Um, I like to shop online. I hate <laughs> shopping in store. Right. Like, just hate it. Um, a big, like, Boohoo, Revolve, Trend Savvy. You know I love me some Trend Savvy. Yes. Um, ASOS, just, like, stuff like that that has, like, cute, like, sets and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I'm, very, I'm not, like, I don't shop anywhere crazy. Like, where do you like to shop? Ooh, it's hard because I just like shop where I see something cute. Yeah, I shop where I am, you know? Like, first of all, I'll just shop anywhere, like anytime. Um, yeah, she has a problem. Yeah, like I could be in any state. Like, I'll be online and I'll see something. Like, I'll just buy. I'm not like a uh, brand de de yeah. or like store specific or like Me a certain neither. brand. Um, like, also, sometimes I'll be looking for something specific and I'll just like type into Google what I want and I'll just like see where it is. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, totally. Okay, this is a hard question for me, but what's your least favorite nickname that I and the Steens have forced on you? Um, probably Tynchnitch Monster. Because <laughs> that makes you a monster. And it's just like so long, it makes no sense. And it's not English. Okay, well, we don't call you it that much. Well, nobody calls me it anymore. I liked Marky Sharky. Oh, that's cute. They called me that when I was like 10. What has been your favorite city you have toured with, Claudia? Huntsville, Alabama. Ugh. That was so fun. Okay, least favorite city though. Oh, um, least favorite city would be, I know Claudia says Cleveland. Mm -hmm. um, but you can't say that in front of me. Oh, she, didn't she say it in front of you? Yeah, but like, you're not gonna do that to me also, right? Least favorite city, hmm. Oh, um, Buffalo, sorry. Okay, that's fair, it's cold there. And it was just like, meh. Dull. I'm sure you didn't get to like see the sights and have the wild wings 
and go to a Bills game. That's also, by the way, really a problem. Like, I wish that I could have eat, like, unkosher meat so I could really, you know, try the lays of the land in other cities. Like, at Whataburger, like, I do get the taquito with um, with the hash brown and potato instead of, like, meat or whatever. But, like, I would love to get, like, a freaking burger, mm -hmm. you know, or chicken tenders. But, honestly, body by snitch is happy that I can't. But, mm -hmm, um, my heart's not. What is the hardest part about being a tour manager for Claude? Hardest part about being a tour manager. Is she a difficult boss? Like you no, not at all. Is she it a devil wears Prada situation over there? Not at all. It's weird how how well we get along. Like we have honestly like really never fought. Mm -hmm. Knock on wood. We like don't get annoyed with each other, which is really nice. The hardest part I would just say is like the waking up early in the flights. Like sometimes you have to wake up at three a.m. like to make a six a.m. flight, and like that is just freaking torture. Oh, you know what's also the worst part? That Claudia flies first and I fly coach, except she did fly me home from Arizona first, and it was so nice of her. But you're getting so many miles. So many miles. So that's free flights for you. Yeah. yeah. Like at the, for, to go away with your friends. Like that's how I, actually that's not even how I paid for my flight, but yeah. But like eventually, eventually. you could be doing that. So no. It's great miles wise, but just like on my, I would just say the hardest part is just like, it's very tough on me. Like, Understood. On, on myself. Very fair. But I'm happy doing it, and it's fun. And, like, I'll never be able to do it again. It's, like, such a cool thing to be doing anyway. Totally. Like, you get to see the whole country. Yeah, like, when I'm, at, when I'm at interviews for jobs, everyone's like, I can't believe you're, like, 21 and just, like, a producer of a comedy show. And I'm just like, me neither. But that's, you're, it's so crazy because you're, you're such a snitch, but you're really working so hard. And for those of you who are still wondering what to pack for this camp, might I suggest checking out Thread Up. Oh, Imagine yeah. diving into the biggest closet in the world packed with your favorite brands and styles at unbelievable prices. Did you know fashion is the second most polluting industry in the world? That's why we love shopping secondhand at Thread Up. Choosing used clothes gives clothes a second life and keeps one less item from ending up in the trash. ThreadUp is the world's largest online consignment and thrift store with up to 90% off estimated retail prices. They have such great brands, everything from Madewell Anthropology to higher-end brands like Coach, you can be the Selena Gomez you wish to see in the world. Everything is hand-inspected and triple-checked to ensure it's in its high-quality condition. Honestly, this is a great place to shop for Camp Toast. Like, first of all, it's just such sustainable fashion, and yeah. I love a good deal. Um, and you can like get super cute things that would be so much more and also like not feel bad about like wearing them, sweating in them, et cetera. Honestly, I'm gonna check it out because I want some cute clothes for Stagecoach. Ooh, that's such a good call. So you should visit threadup.com slash toast today for an extra 30% off your first order. That's T-H-R-E-D-U-P dot com slash toast for 30% off your first order. No A in there, threadup.com slash toast for an extra 30% off today. Terms apply. Um, I need to do so much shopping. This episode has reminded me, even when I was getting dressed today with like my new shoes, I was like, okay, I have new shoes, but I don't have new anything else, you know? Oh, totally, yeah, me too. I need like shirts. Blouses. Like I need shirts. Me too. Ugh, we have such a fun I day ahead like, of us. I also need like good like airport like mm. clothing. No, everyone always looks so cute in the airport and I look like such a slob. And it's like, I feel like, I need to do better, especially like yeah, if like, I want to get first class upgrades like yeah, Claudia. You're being one of those people. She always gets upgraded, and I never get upgraded. She has such a higher medallion than me, and it's not fair. Well, you're, you're working on it. Snitch. I know. But it's like. Don't beat yourself up over it. She's always like number one on the upgrade list, and I'm always like 36. Like you see, like CO, and then you see MO, like literally here. That's so sad. It ain't you right. work your way up. I'm working. I'm working my way. Like up. when I was 21, I wasn't even on the upgrade list. So I'd I'm rather, hardly. I think just I'd by saying be 36. I think just by saying like, put me on it. That's all you have to do. Understood. Well, thank you for joining us. We have to go pick up our nephew Sneechas for an ants day. That's out. my dating life. Totally. Being with he's the best man the in the world. Gem of men. Other than my husband, he's the best man in the world. Um, where, thank you for joining us. Where can everyone follow you who don't already yet? Because they're not in tune or this is their first time watching. In which case, this is our little sister. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm a sister. We call her the snitch. Uh, we have a Patreon episode on why. She's also a counselor snitch, counsel you out a snitch. She has a total international harem of campers. She's an international. <laughs> that is expanding every day. She's an international counselor of mystery. You so, can follow me at Margashre, and you can also follow me at Body by Snitch, even though she's kind of dormant right now. But she'll come back eventually. Just that is incredibly hard to do on the road. Yeah. She'll, yeah, she'll be back. I feel like summer is going to be. Summer's going to be, and like, just like give her time. Like, she's, she's getting back into a routine and figuring herself out, but she's still here. She thinks about her all the time. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, thank you so much for being here and helping your sister out. Today was such a fun episode for me because, like, it's you, guest host week of Jackie O Takeover, and it's really fun and like it forces me, like, you know, to really hone my craft. But sometimes it's nice to just kick back with the sister, like I usually do every day. Yes. And just throw another sister in the mix. Ooh. 
So thank you, Councillor Snitch. We love you. Thank you for having me. Snitch love you. Snitch us on the garlic bread. Snitch us on the garlic bread. Bye, guys. Bye.